Okay, why did you call the EP Love and Honor Part One? Do you know? Do you know what it was? <laughs> the funny thing was, I I didn't even have a name for it. I I didn't even I didn't even it weren't even going to be an EP. It was just going to be doing tunes as they go along. And then I saw this this piece of artwork by um is it Sherwin? You know Sherwin theology he, he does all these artwork covers on instagram and i saw that i saw the cover and i was like that's a nice cover they had a guy well you've seen the cover like the guy running and then in the bottom there was there was two lovers it was like a, a guy kissing the girl and it, and it just stemmed from there i was like yeah love and honor <laughs> he's he's doing that he's doing that for her kind of thing so um from there it was just let me just see if i can get some 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 of our rappers on it and just put out an EP. I wanted it to be an album, but it, it, that's just going to take too long. So yeah, it was just a just a quick EP. Okay, so what was the process like putting together Love and Honor with all the features and stuff? The, the feature side, it, I mean, Converse, because I've worked with him before. He, um, if he hears something dope, he, he'll be on it. You know, so that that was I wouldn't say it was an easy sell. It was just making sure I had the right beat. Ash Ash was another one. He's he's if he hears it, something that's dope, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll be on it. Kakarot, I haven't I haven't done anything with Kakarot before, but um, I just like it. I, I just I just love his style. To be honest, yeah, he's 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 just dark. And I did this beat, and it sounded it sounded like a because the funny thing is when I make beats, I. I mean, I'm kind of like inspired by what by what's around me. So I was I was watching Kong versus King Kong versus Godzilla, <laughs> and and that beat I was just like, yeah, I've got to make you know what I mean. One of them kind of um, Godzilla kind of beats. I made two beats for him that, and I sent them to him, and he liked the other beat. And I said to him, okay, you can have that other beat. Can you do Can you do something on this beat? And he was like, yeah. He was like, kind of like them both, but I like. I definitely like the other one. I want to do something with that. So, um, so that was that one. Um, who else? Oh, what's his name? Il, um, Il Sykes. That was a uh, that beat was. Um, I think I just I just did that beat. That was another one. I was just sitting there with my uh, MPC five hundred and just sitting there watching TV, and just knocked that out. And I normally when I'm doing beats is like a 24 bar kind of thing so you do like an eight bar chorus 16 verse you know and i kind of look like try and change it up you know every like eight or 16 so it's, you know different changes but that was just that was just like a four bar i think and it just kept looping around and the thing was i was just sat there just listening to it and i'm like i don't need to do much with it so um yeah i sent that off to will and he said yeah he'll do something and I think that one came back last. I, I t it took about three months for him to send it back to me. And honestly, when like halfway through it, I was like, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to finish it because you know I'm I'm waiting on ill, and I I don't, I don't really like asking these people. Yeah, come on, get this get this done for us, get this done because you know the people got their lives, you know, and you you know you're not um they're doing it as a favor kind of thing. So that was that one. It, it that came back then the the Hus kingpin connect that was um that was like a, a that was a spur of a moment one that one he he literally he put out a post saying that he's looking for beats kind of thing from you know just from unknown producers so i sent him a load of stuff didn't hear nothing for two weeks and then um i just thought you know i didn't you, didn't, you don't think nothing of it and then he he messaged me back he said yeah, I'm in. The, I'm in the labs this weekend. You know, if you want, to, if you want to send me something, I'll give you a good price, blah blah blah. And I'm thinking to myself, do I want to do it? Do I want to? And the thing is, is like during that time, I was doing a lot of DJing, um, like pub DJing over the Christmas period, and you know before that. So I, I had like some spare cash, just put it that way. And I was like, you know what? All right, let's just either do it or not do it. And and the thing is, because he's Trin well, the Trinidadian connection as well, because. That's the, you know that's where where my part from, and I was like I got to do something with him. So yeah, I just um, sent that beat. Well, I sent him a different beat, and he liked the other beat, 
he sent me back the vocals and then I I I remixed it which is which is the version you hear on the album but the, the other version was uh, it, it was kind is is more soulful but this this version I was like I, I, you know I wanted a I wanted something that fit the album and that that kind of fit it so that was that you mentioned uh what was the movie King Kong yeah Kong, Kong, Godzilla yeah Godzilla King Kong yeah you know, a couple of the songs on the EP, like Tom Clancy, Move Back, mm. have some sounds that sound like they're from movie soundtracks. The, is, is that the genre you sample from? Like, or is that just the feeling you were at? The, that Tom Clancy, um, that Tom Clancy track, that was, it, it's from a, it's from a, a Japanese, I don't, I don't want to give out. So right, right. No, 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 just, the, just the genre. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's from a it's from a Japanese film like okay. soundtrack, but when I was when I was list well, what I was I was going through my from my um, Wu Tang period then as well when I made that because I, I watched that um, you know that Hulu thing with RZA and you know the um, American Dream the, the American Dream thing that yeah yeah, yeah I, I watched that and I like, it just it just made me say do you know what. I just got. I just got to do the Rocky Four thing and just go away for you know, go away and make beats for, for a for a while. So yeah, I just went. I was on my Wu Tang kind of, kind of vibe. Then you can hear it. You can hear the vi- like the violins. You know the glaciers, the vice violins. So I was kind of on that kind of thing. But yeah, the it, the other one what was it the Ill Bill one, Kill Bill, <laughs> Ill Bill, Kill Bill. You know for the um for the remix because I I what I literally watched um kill bill and um that you know that just kind of took me away onto that one um mountain of the menace how, oh, did, yeah. <laughs> how did you end up working with him do, do you know what he he my last album like he um well it was it came through that you know tomorrow's never promised track with um is it afro schizo on it and he he was like i really love this beat and that beat that that beat's been through that like, there's stories on that beat you know it's been to that person's been to there it's been to there and montenegro was the he, he was the only one who was like yeah this beat is uh, you know i love this beat so um he took he took it and he he said can i use it for and i'll get somebody you know what i mean i'll get somebody big on it and i was i I was just like, look, bro, just take it, you know, do what you're going to do. And I weren't really expecting too much. And then he's come back and sent me a verse with Schizo on it and and Afro. And I was like, right, he's, you know, he's 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 kept his word. He's, you know, he's he's done his bit. Then um, from that, I the next, I think I had um, did we come out with Matanza after? No, Matanza was before that. Then I did my album, and he hit me up before. Well, I told him, yeah, I'm, I'm doing my album. That was that the black black gold stash LP, and he's um he said I I'd have wanted you to oh I was gonna ask if I could put it out, and I was like with the, the next one yeah definitely the next one so love and honor was the next one. <laughs> you mentioned the NPC five thousand. What else is in your five hundred five hundred five hundred? Yeah, I'm sorry, the three thousand. The three thousand is the highest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, 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 yeah. which one is the five hundred? Which one is the MPC five hundred? The little tiny one. The little tiny. One. Okay, like where okay. The, you can put the batteries in and everything. And the thing, the thing with that is, I I had that for a few years and I was using it wrong. It's only when I got the um, you know, the MPC Touch, which okay. is like the the MPC Live, but you know, it's it's you have to plug it into your to your PC and all that. It's only when I got that and I put my um my my compact disc into the into the touch you could you know you can transfer the programs over and i'm seeing well i could do different programs on it i can do you know all these different because all, all my um i don't know if you're familiar with the mpc how you know the workflow mm-hmm. drum programs and you know sample programs etc cetera, etc cetera. when i was on the 500 everything was just on one program but but then i've oh you know you've you kind of learn how to use different programs, et cetera, et cetera. Cause I've got the touch and it showed you all of that. But before that, 
had the 2000s. Well, I still got the 2000. And, and, um, that only had the one program as well, so that was all. That was all kind of new to me, and it just opened my eyes up how to how to really use it properly. So yeah, so it's the five hundred touch and the two thousand. And you use the five hundred more than use, the touch. I I use whatever whatever if I want to do something. Yeah, if I want to do something quick, I'll use the, I'll use the touch. If I want to, you know, if I'm sitting just chilling out. I'll, I'll use the 500 if I want, if I want to do something that, um, and have fun with it. I use the, I use the 2000. I don't, I was speak, speaking to, um, C-Fax, who's a, he's a producer over here as well. He's, he's dope. You need to check him out. I was speaking to him cause he's, he's got a, I think he's got the, is it the live or something? I don't know. The one with the screen on it. I don't know which one it, on it is. And he's got the 2000 XL as well. And he's been putting out some, he's been putting out some banging, some banging beats on his 2000 i'm like okay so I, I can only use the 2000 in the summer because where where it is in my in my room it's just like i've got to stand up and it's you know i've got to be in the right in the right kind of frame of mind so at the moment i'm using a lot doing a lot of 500 stuff because i'm you know I'm, i can just sit down and relax and kind of do it but yeah 2000s in the summer <laughs> okay now the ep has kind of a menacing sound yeah <laughs> how would you describe your sound that's that's my sound man just i just i don't know heavy drums and you know i just like that noise you know i mean uh, my my favorite album's um cold vein and it, you know that kind of cold dark kind of sound but i, I think now it, I'm, I'm trying to make it a bit more i don't know maybe a bit more not as mechanical as as cold vein because it's it's a very cold you know very cold kind of kind of sound but yeah a bit more a bit warmer but and a bit soulfuler but a bit harder okay who else are you inspired by who are some of your production influences oh it's loads man it's loads R rizza definitely lp definitely um, you know alchemist jay zone jay zone it's a love jay zone you know but um, it's lights. Mm. Jay Zone's my man. Jay Zone, yeah. so slept on. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is uh, you you can hit, you know, a Jay Zone beat. You know what I mean? Mm. You, you know a Jay Zone beat. Yeah, I, I think I think that was you know that was one of the um, because I, I you know I've been producing for a while and, and like I didn't I didn't really kind of have a have a sound. You know, it was like I need um. After I did Matanza and uh, Iron Statue, it was like I need I need to, and and I and to be honest, I think Matanza is some of my best work, like sample wise, and and Rob just kills it with the lyric. It, it just it just kind of just goes together like that, and um, I was like I need I need like, but that's more his sound, and I was like I need to find my you know a sound that I can say that's my sound, and I'm yeah just trying to. I think love and honor kind of um say encapsulated it, but it, it's working towards what what I what how I want it to sound, yeah. If you could produce an entire album for one MC, who would it be? Well, they they, they they've gone now. <laughs> it'd, it'd either be Sean Price or Tame One. Ah. Uh, yeah. Why 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 those two guys? I I, I Oh, I just I, Sean Price is just like I, I you know, he's, I, I just love him, you know. I just he's got that that ignorance and that that you know that <laughs> swagger and and the, and the you know the comic element with it as well. But it's hard, you know. Um, and Tame One as well, yeah. Tame One with it because because of his flows. I used to, I used to, I used to love um, was it, the stuff he did with his parallel thought. Yeah, the stuff he does with Parallel Four, I used to love all of that. Yeah. So, who spit your favorite verse on Love and Honor? Oh, yeah, oh, I, oh, I, do you know what I? I was thinking about it the other day. And like, what's my favorite tune out of it? I li I like the one Ill, um, Ill Sites does. But as for replays, I I, I think maybe Tom Clancy, that Converse verse. I I remember when I got it. We were sitting in a, 
Where was we? We was in a a, a whiskey bar in London. <laughs> me and my mate. We was in a whiskey bar. It was a plush whiskey bar in um in a uh, Oxford Street, just off Oxford Street. And it, it like came up on my phone. It's like yeah, um, we transfer from from Converse. So I've downloaded it, and well, he's there talking, and I'm like. Jesus Christ, you've got to hear this, man. You've got to hear this. And it, it's because it's just one long, you know, just relentless. But yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's that could be my favourite track out of all of them. I don't know, though, you know. <laughs> it's tough. That's tough. Yeah. So you go by G-Man, but also mm. Dex Terror. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, I don't say it's a weird story. I, I, like, everyone knows me as G, so... I'm like, yeah, just just call me G, you know. What I mean? <laughs> just call me G. De- Dex Terror was like when I used to do the um, I used to do workshops for kids, and they were like, "Well, we need we need a company name, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And I was, you know, I was like, "When do you need it?" And they're like, "We need it in the next ten minutes." And I was like, "Oh, so I just I just you know, first thing that came onto my head, Dex Terror, yeah, Dex Terror, and then, and uh, that was it, and it just kind of stuck. So um. Yeah, it is what it is. It's just stuck with me. So, uh... okay. Last question, man. When will we hear Love and Honor Part Two? Hopefully, hopefully this year. Hopefully. I've got, um, who have I got down? I know Montana's on it, definitely. I've got to set, I've got to do another batch of beats and just send them out. Um, who else wanted to be on it? Actually, I don't want to give any any names away because I, you know, I don't really want to. Um, they'll be like, "Oh no, we said we'd be on it, but we don't want to be on it," kind of thing. So yeah, some other, some, you know, some people have said, "Yeah, we'll definitely, we'll definitely be up for doing it again, etc." So um, hopefully next this year. Okay, all right, G man, thank you for joining the realhiphop.com. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No Peace. worries. Peace, bro.